Well, hello. Hope you're doing okay. Welcome back to Kenny's Real World Photography. I just kind of tell it like it is. Uh, hope you've been doing okay. It's still winter here. We got still have sleet out on the ground. Um, but anyhow, I hope you're doing okay. It soon we'll be all able to get out and take some photos. Uh, but things have been pretty dead for me lately. I know. Um, Today I thought I'd talk about a lens I have never talked about before, and I use it a lot. Uh, remember, I'm a crop sensor. I'm Nikon you know, crop sensor DX camera guy. Uh, I shoot all my portraits and everything, you know, professionally. And I just use the D7200 or 7100. Um, but there is a lens, and I can't believe I haven't talked about it, and it is a good one. It's really, really good for almost everything except action and maybe flying birds or something. Um, it is the Nikon 55-300, to 300, guys. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. It's the 55-300. to 300. That's a DX, obviously. Um, oh, man, it takes great pictures. Picture quality is fantastic on it, as good as anything else that Nikon has out there. Um, it is the uh, it's a VRED lens, so it has vibration reduction. It has the glass that really helps do away with you know uh, chromatic aberration and things. Uh, it's a 4.5 to 5.6 out on the long end. It's got quite a bit of travel. Uh, if you can look here, you see. Um, it's made out of the regular Nikon plastic like all their other lenses are. Uh, up here, uh, this kind of has a hard rubber feel to it. Uh, I had originally bought this lens when I was in China, and uh, I was needing a new 300, something max out at 300. I had a Sigma 70 to 300 that took great pictures, but that sucker was so noisy, it, it scared people around me. Uh, it just, you hear it making all kinds of noise, and it was always fishing. It didn't seem like it mattered what, it seemed like it was always fishing the focus. And I, and this 55 to 300, it really fit the bill, guys. Uh, and it's a good, if you look here, it's got the metal mounting bracket, rubber O-ring, the dust seal, you know, this is a fine, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this lens at all. Um, I used it on the street all the time. I'd carry like a, um, like a Sigma, my Sigma 17 to 50, uh, or a prime lens, my 35 millimeter or something. Then this was usually the lens I had in my bag, uh, or on my camera when I was doing all my street photos, uh, or walking around just taking nature, you know, photos, uh, you'll find this lens is really nice and sharp, really, really good optic quality. Uh, optically, it's like I said, it's as good as any other lenses I have, and you can put it on about 200 millimeters if you got good light, snap some portraits with it. If you're out with some friends and you want to take a good portrait shot and blow out the background a little bit, the sucker did it. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Um, the only downfall of this lens is, and a lot of people, a lot of people don't like it because of that, it is a slow autofocus. It is not a fast snap autofocus. Uh, but general purpose, walking around shooting, uh, you know, unless the birds are flying, it's fine. Unless the animals are running full speed, it's fine. Um, the only thing I've ever tried to avoid using this lens is if I went out trying to shoot people playing soccer or something like that. Uh, the 70 to 300, uh, especially the, v the old full frame VR uh, uh, ED lens, that sucker is really fast. It's really, really good. Uh, but if you're looking for a lens just to walk around with, it's not heavy. You can put this one around your neck, but like all 300 millimeters, when you start getting to the 300 millimeter and above, it, they're they're a little they can be a little heavy. You know, a lot of times I just uh, 
I'll just take mine and kind of wrap the strap around my arm and just kind of hold the hold the lens. I, I'm fine with doing that. Uh, there's nothing fancy about this lens. It's got the regular. Uh, I don't know if we can see it here. Uh, it's just got an automatic manual and VR on and off. Uh, if you can see that, that's all it's got. Nothing fancy to it, um, but it's good. Um, I think you'll notice uh, if you get one of these lenses. Uh, 55 300 is a that's a lot of range. It really is a lot of range, and I don't think you'd have any problems adjusting to it at all. Uh, it's got a really cool little cap here. The cap has, uh, if you can see this, uh, it's got these two little tabs. You just press in on, and it just pops on. You know, that's, that's all it is to it. Uh, it's 58 millimeter filter thread. Uh, I used to use it a lot uh, with my um, Polarized uh, filters, you know, my uh, some kind of not not necessarily ND filter, but you know, just a regular you know uh, polarizer filter, something uh, like if you're shooting clouds, you know, blue sky stuff like that. It's fine with that too. Uh, but this, anyhow, yeah, so I talked about this for a minute. I I really really love this lens. Uh, like I said, I've been using it for a long time. I know it's an older lens. It probably came out, oh man, like 2010, something like that. Uh, but if you have one of the newer Z cameras and you've got an FTZ adapter, hey guys, there you go. You know, you got something right here. So um, it's still a good lens right now going into the future, I think, until Nikon comes out with some more stuff, you know, for DX. Because right now, really, the choices aren't that great, anyhow. Uh, but it originally it was about $400. I don't know what. You can probably find them. Uh, look on B&H and places like that. But anyhow, guys, great lens. I really do endorse this. If you want high-quality pictures, you know, price not so bad, get it. You'll, you'll be okay. But I hope you have a great day and stay tuned for something else, okay? We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.